powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us this Friday. I'm Janelle Slade. Russ has the night off. Well, a night of honor, hope and heroes as communities across our region come together to fight cancer. The 2019 Yellowstone Relay for Life, a somber reminder that cancer claims entirely too many lives, but also a celebration of support, survival, hope and love. Well, it's been an emotional evening at Yellowstone Relay for Life. The track filled with cancer survivors and supporters every lap bringing us closer to finding a cure. As night falls, the track at Billings West High, a glow with hope, honor, and determination. Q2's David Jay standing by live in the midst of tonight's luminarias. David. Well, Janelle, uh, quite a different scene out here than when you were at uh, earlier tonight. Uh, everybody's uh, now uh, inside, all the luminaria out there. They tried to light them, we're told, but uh, they all went out. Uh, the hope sign out on the other side where the bleachers are near 24th Street West, that's also out. But everybody uh, came under the bleachers to get out of the rain, and that's what we're seeing all around uh, West High right now. Some of those luminaria were out there with candles that uh, were lining the track. And earlier tonight, uh, with still a little bit of light out there, family and friends were out there, as well as survivors trying to look for names. The Relay for Life crew started around 8 this morning and worked into the evening to get about 6,000 luminaria out there. The names are for survivors, caregivers, and anyone with an experience with cancer. Many of the people out there, many of the bags out there have a special message. And for some, the Luminaria Walk is as special as any part of Relay for Life. The stairs over there, it'll spell hope. And that's what everybody has right now is hope that they'll find a cure for it. So it's, it's truly a beautiful, beautiful event when the luminaries are lit. If you don't get tearful and have some emotion, you know, it's, it's very emotional because it means, it even means more to you. People really feel um, appreciation for what we've been through and what we're going through and what we hope has passed us now when we're on to better things. When they light up all the lights, it's pretty amazing. Um, just, and it's kind of sad to see how many people are actually on the out here and how many names are out here. To remember that those are all people that either died or are still surviving. Well, Janelle, uh, we, they had a lot of plans out here, including fireworks. We're not sure what the uh, plans are now. Uh, also had some other walks as well as the closing ceremony set up for uh, 1245. But haven't had a chance to talk to anybody. We just kind of rushed over here in the rain. So we'll uh, try to get that uh, a little bit later. But uh, that be do it for now. Uh, all of us uh, under here, under the tents, uh, kind of waiting for things to happen. Janelle? All right, David, we do have some good news. We have just heard that not only did this year's relay surpass its half a million dollar goal, the latest total stands at $567,000. Thanks so much, David. Well, that's a lot. Okay, thank you. Another major relay moment marked tonight as all of the survivors took to the track. Now, hundreds of survivors led by the West High Pep Band kicked off the relay with that first lap. The Survivors Lap, a moment to recognize and cheer on our survivors who have beat the disease and those who are in the middle of the fight. For some, this lap is especially poignant because cancer can cross multiple generations. The Survivor Lap means a lot to us. We're, there's five of us. I'm the fifth survivor. <laughs> My mom is the second survivor. My mom was a first. I just look at all the survivors, so many survivors. It makes you thankful, thankful that there are this many survivors I mean, here. and there's people that are in, you know, wheelchairs that are going around the lap, you know, so it doesn't hurt us to even walk around the lap. As we all know, Relay for Life means so many different things to so many people. Tonight, Q2 Samantha Sullivan introduces us to Wes and Lori. They've been turning out to this event since 1997, and the significance keeps changing. Well, our involvement uh, with the uh, Relay for Life uh, started uh, be as a result of uh, Lori being uh, uh, an oncology nurse at the Cancer Center. As a nurse at the St. Vincent Cancer Centers of Montana, Lori Karahassan has always been a part of Relay for Life. For this family, it was a time to show support for patients and friends in the community facing the difficult road of cancer treatment and recovery. It's such a beautiful experience of our community coming together, their courage, their dignity, 
um, is really inspiring for all of us. Wes remembers watching the emotional survivor's lap year after year. In watching them, it was, you know, it, it was inspiring. Uh, and it, uh, when I looked at their faces, uh, uh, there was hope in their faces. But real life or life would soon take on a new meaning for Wes and his family. Little did I know I was going to be a participant in the, in the survivor lap. In 2003, I was uh, diagnosed with uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. It was a rare form of lymphoma. The cancer was a tumor below his right eye. After treatment, Wes went into remission, but in 2006, the cancer came back. Now, thankfully, after another round of treatment, Wes was cancer-free and has been ever since. I found myself uh, in remission and participating in the survivor lab and it was a whole new meaning for me. I started thinking about how I watched people, survivors, and I'm, I'm thinking now, now that I'm being looked at as a survivor, and I was really grateful for that. And uh, since then, I've been blessed with uh, 11 grandchildren, mm -hmm. and uh, that's what makes it exciting for me to say you're a survivor. And this year is extra special, as all of their kids and grandkids will be there to watch Papa walk and to celebrate his recovery. All right, thanks so much, Sam. You know, also, even Wes's mom, who traveled to Billings all the way from Hawaii, is there to cheer him on tonight. Now, this event and all the fundraising and donations that go into it are a year-long endeavor. Just one of many fundraisers that area schools take part in is Relay Recess. Q2's Jenny Fick sat down with a young lady who played a special part in this year's recess. Meet Riley. Her favorite color is pink, and she is a cancer survivor. At age three, doctors discovered a tumor on her spinal cord. In the process of having it removed, Riley became a quadriplegic. She went from a feisty three-year-old to all of a sudden she was bedridden and had a spinal cord tumor and we never knew what was going to happen. One morning the doctor said she'd probably never move her hands again. By that afternoon she was wiggling a finger. You know, your child, you love them unconditionally, but when you see the struggles that they have to go to, your heart just like explodes with um, love and everything for your child. Riley is now a sassy first grader at Huntley Project. I mean, she's just a fighter and she's so strong and oh, she's feisty as ever. <laughs> Riley will not get to be on the track at Relay. It's too hot outside. She has trouble regulating to cool down. Um, but it was great that we were able to do the Relay for recess. The Relay recess lets students and teachers honor cancer survivors and fighters in their own big way. Shepard and Huntley engage in some friendly competition of fundraising for the Relay called the Battle of the Bridge. They battle it out to see who can raise the most funds uh, for cancer research, but also, also focusing on education for students. I really love doing the survivor walk, and then they did 20 minutes of laps around the, the gym and whatnot, and then they released the balloons. That was her favorite part, to watch how the balloons go. They had popsicles and snacks and tattoos. Riley's classmates rallied around her. Kids never stare. I mean, we've ish had issues, I guess, with adults doing it. Kids will go up to her and be like, oh, why are you in your wheelchair? And she'll answer them that my wheels are my legs. I'm like, oh, okay, hey, you want to come do this? It's, it's great to see like that, just the kids all coming together and just being kids. Riley may not get to physically attend the relay, but she will be in the hearts of many on the track and will have a luminaria with her name on it there. And the luminaria ceremony is absolutely gorgeous because it's twilight. Uh, Relay for Life really does give hope, so when we light those luminarias, it's something truly special. It gives you hope for the future, hope for a cure, and that's really the reason we're there. A day to honor, a day to remember, and a day to keep up the fight. Maybe we can light a fire in them too. Riley's got a fire in her, her mom's got a fire in her, I've got a fire in me, and if we can have more people um, help light the world and, and help us cure cancer, I mean, it makes everything worth it. Every hour, every day, all the things leading up to Relay for in that moment, it's worth it. In Billings, Jenny Fick, MTN News. Thanks, Jenny. And Jenny tells us in the future, Riley plans to use her Make-A-Wish to visit the Disney princesses.
Well, the 41st annual summer fairs kicked off today and moved from Veterans Park to a new venue. Now, the Rimrock Mall is a new location for the Yellowstone Art Museum fundraiser. This is the sixth location in the history of summer fair. Now, the art is outside to purchase and just enjoy, and an education booth is inside the mall. It's an opportunity for the artists and those who enjoy art. A lot of times this is everyone's first chance at really experiencing art firsthand. Um, whether you're buying something for the first time or just looking at somebody that actually hand makes something. Um, so I think that's important so people understand why we do it at the museum and having fine artwork hanging on a wall. This is really the beginning of that. It's great for them. I mean, this is really the bread and butter. They go from festival to festival all summer long. This is the third year for Summer Fair. It started on that it starts on Friday. It runs Saturday from 10 a.m. to 7:30 p.m. and Sunday from 11 to 4. Well, turning now to weather, Bob McGuire. It is going to be a hot weekend. In spite of showers and thunderstorms moving through the yes. area right now, let me show it to you on the Doppler radar. We had a little line of thunderstorms blow right through the Billings area earlier on. You saw what happened with David Jay's report out there at the Relay for Life. Well, now, uh, so far, we've had reports of uh, some small hail in these, in some cases, half inch size hail as the storms continue to make its way into the Billings Heights and on up towards parts of um, Muscle Shell County by Roundup. But let me show you our forecast model shows this stuff will blow through here tonight. By tomorrow morning, things looking pretty good out here. And then probably by sometime six o'clock tomorrow night, Look for some more scattered showers and thunderstorms moving in. Then I think by the time Sunday gets here, you're looking for another batch of thunderstorms moving in by 10 o'clock. So with that being said, here's what our weekend forecast has. And it's got a lot of rain in it. Take a look at this. It's going to be 93 degrees on Saturday with a 20% chance for afternoon storms. On Sunday up to 94 degrees with about a 30% chance for some thunderstorms then too. So yeah, kind of a hot and wet weekend. We'll have more on the rest of your forecast in a few more minutes. All right, thanks so much, Bob. Well, tonight, more information on yesterday's major campus shutdown and scare at Montana State University. We've learned the suspect taken into custody after making threats to harm himself and others was sent for a mental health evaluation. At this time, no charges have been filed. Police were able to search the man's car and home and found a loaded shotgun and hunting rifle. Just two hours before making the threat, the former MSU employee had a dismissal hearing at the university. Police say investigators have found no evidence that the man was planning any criminal activity, but the shelter in place was initiated out of precaution. A Montana judge is considering whether to award a Jewish woman millions in damages after the founder of a neo-Nazi website told his followers to unleash a troll st storm on her family. In December 2016, the Daily Stormer website founder, Andrew Anglin, accused Tanya Gersh of trying to drive the mother of white nationalist Richard Spencer out of Whitefish. Now, she says the Daily Stormer published her contact information on its website. Gersh and her husband say since then they've been threatened and harassed. At a hearing Thursday, Gersh's attorney showed images from an advertisement for a march on Whitefish. It showed photos of Gersh, her young son, and two other Jewish women over the images of Auschwitz gates. Now, Gersh filed a lawsuit against Anglin after he failed to show up for a deposition in April. Her team is asking for a default judgment that basically claims the defense forfeited. Well, coming up on tonight's 10 o'clock news, the Gulf Coast bracing for Barry as the massive storm continues to hurtle towards land. And in sports tonight, Ms. Parker Bredding forced into season ending surgery. Scott has the latest. You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and Sports with Scott Breen. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.